Hey guys, re-recording the reading of uh, Wonder and just a reminder for those of you that missed yesterday, um, we talked a little bit about, sorry I woke up, um, where we're at and we are in Justin's perspective and um, we'll start from there. So one of the reminders I do say though is that um, he doesn't use great punctuation in his writing. Specifically, when new people are talking, he uses no quotation. So it is a little bit tricky, but um, we'll give it our best shot. So the first chapter is called Our Town in Justin's Perspective, which is Via's Boyfriend. We're doing the play Our Town for the spring show this year. Olivia dares me to try out for the lead role. The stage manager and somehow, I get it, total fluke, never got any lead roles in anything before. I tell Olivia she brings me good luck. Unfortunately, she doesn't get the female lead, Emily Gibbs. The pink-haired girl named Miranda gets it. Olivia gets a bit part and is also the Emily understudy. I'm actually more disappointed than Olivia is. She almost seems relieved. I don't love people staring at me, she says, which is sort of strange coming from such a pretty girl. A part of me thinks maybe she blew her audition on purpose. The spring show is at the end of April. It's mid-March now, and so that's less than six weeks to memorize my part plus rehearsal time, plus practicing with my band, plus finals, plus spending time with Olivia. It's going to be a rough six weeks, that's for sure. Mr. Davenport, the drama teacher, is already manic about the whole thing. It will drive us crazy by the time it's over, no doubt. I heard through the grapevine that he'd been planning on doing The Elephant Man, but changed it to our town at the last minute, and that change took a week off of our rehearsal schedule. Not looking forward to the craziness of the next month and a half. Ladybug. Olivia and I are sitting on the front stoop and she's helping me with my lines. It's a warm March evening, almost like summer. The sky is still bright, cyan, but the sun is low and the sidewalks are streaked with long shadows. I'm reciting. So this is part of the play. Yes, the sun's come up over a thousand times. Summers and winters have cracked the mountains a little bit more and the rains have brought down some of the dirt. Some babies that weren't even born before we began talking regular sentences already have begun talking regular sentences already, and a number of people who thought they were right young and spry have noticed that they can't bound up a flight of stairs like they used to without their heart fluttering a little. I shake my head. I can't remember the rest. All that could happen in a thousand days, Olivia prompts me, reading from the script. Oh, right, right, I say, shaking my head. I sigh. I'm wiped, Olivia. How in the world am I going to remember all these lines? You will, she answers confidently. She reaches out and cups her hands over a ladybug that appears out of nowhere. See? A good luck sign, she says, slowly lifting her top hand to reveal the ladybug walking on the palm of her other hand. Good luck or just hot weather, I joke. Of course good luck, she answers, watching the ladybug crawl up her wrist. There should be a thing about making a wish on a ladybug. Augie and I used to do it with fireflies when we were little. She cups her hand over the ladybug again. Come on, make a wish. Close your eyes. I dutifully close my eyes, a long second passes, then I open them. Did you make a wish, she asks. Yep, she smiles, uncups her hand, and the ladybug, as if on cue, spreads its wings and flits away. Don't you want to know what I wish for, I asked. No, she answers shyly, looking at, up at the sky, which at this very moment is the exact color of her eyes. I made a wish too, she says, very, says mysteriously, but she has so many things she could wish for, I have no idea what she's thinking. The bus stop. Olivia's mom, Augie, Jack, and Daisy come down the stoop just as I'm saying goodbye to Olivia. Slightly awkward. Hey guys, says mom. Says the mom, pretending not to see anything, but the two boys are giggling. Hi, Mrs. Pullman. Please call me Isabel Justin, she says. It's like the third time she's told me this, so I really need to start calling her that. I'm heading home, I say, as if to explain. Oh, are you heading to the subway, she says, following the dog with the newspaper. Can you walk Jack to the bus stop? No problem. That okay with you, Jack? The mom asks him, and he shrugs. Justin can stay with you till the bus comes? Of course. We all say our goodbyes. Olivia winks at me. You don't have to, s to stay with me, says Jack as we're walking up the block. I take the bus by myself all the time. Augie's mom is just way too overprotective. He's got a low, gravelly voice, like a little tough guy. He kind of looks like one of those little rascal kids in the old black and white movies, like he should be wearing a newsboy cap and knickers. We get to the bus stop and the schedule says the bus will be there in eight minutes. I'll wait with you, I tell him. Up to you, he shrugs. 
Can I borrow a dollar? I want some gum. I fish a dollar out of my pocket and watch him cross the street to the grocery store on the corner. He seems too small to be walking around by himself somehow. And then I think how I was that young when I was taking the subway by myself. Way too young. I'm going to be an overprotective dad someday. I know it. My kids are going to know I care. I'm waiting there a minute or two when I notice three kids walking up the block from the other direction. They walk right past the grocery store, but one of them looks inside and nudges the other two, and they all back up and look inside. I can tell they're up to no good, all elbowing each other, laughing. One of them is Jack's height, but the other two look much bigger, more like teens. They hide behind excuse me, behind the fruit stand in front of the store, and when Jack walks out, they trail behind him, making loud throw-up noises. Jack casually turns around at the corner to see who they are, and they run away, away high-fiving each other and laughing. Little jerks. Jack crosses the street like nothing happened and stands next to me at the bus stop, blowing the bubble. Friends of yours, I finally say. <laughs> he says. He's trying to smile, but I can see he's upset. Just some jerks from school, he says. A kid named Julian and his two gorillas, Henry and Miles. Do they bother you like that a lot? No, they've never done that before. They'd never do that in school or they'd get kicked out. Julian lives two blocks from here, so I guess it was just bad luck running into him. Oh, okay, I nod. It's not a big deal, he assures me. We both automatically look down Amsford Avenue to see if the bus is coming. We're sort of in a war, he says after a minute, as if that explains everything. Then he pulls out this crumpled piece of loose leaf paper from his jean pocket and gives it to me. I unfold it, and it's a list of names in three columns. He's turned the whole grade against me, says Jack. Not the whole grade, I point out, looking down the list. He leaves me notes in my locker that say stuff like, everybody hates you. You should tell your teacher about that, Jack looks at me like I'm an idiot and shakes his head. Anyway, you have all these neutrals, I say, pointing to the list. If you get them on your side, things will even up a bit. Yeah, well, that's really going to happen, he says sarcastically. Well, why not? He shoots me another look like I'm absolutely the dumbest guy he's ever talked to in the world. What? I say. He shakes his head like I'm hopeless. Let's just say, he says, I'm friends with someone who isn't exactly the most popular kid in the school. Then it hits me. What's not coming out and what he's not coming out and saying. August. This is all about his being friends with August and he doesn't want to tell me because I'm the sister's boyfriend. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. I see the bus coming down Amsford Avenue. Well, just hang in there, I tell him, handing back the paper. Middle school is about as bad as it gets, and then it gets better. Everything will work out. He shrugs and shoves the list back into his pocket. We wave by when he gets on the bus, and I watch it pull away. When I get to the subway station two blocks away, I see the same three kids hanging out in front of the bagel place next door. They're all still laughing and yuck yucking each other like they're some kind of gang bang bangers with little rich boys in expensive skinny jeans acting tough. I don't know what possesses me, but I take my glasses off, put them in my pocket, and tuck my fiddle case, which looks like a machine gun case, under my arm so my pointy side is facing up. I walk over to them, my face scrunched up, mean-looking. They look at me, laughs dying on their lips when they see me. Ice cream cones at odd angles. Yo, listen up. Don't mess with Jack, I say really slowly, gritting my teeth, my voice all Clint Eastwood tough guy. Mess with him again, and you'll be very, very sorry. And then I tap my fiddle case for effect. Got it? They nod in unison, ice cream drip dripping onto their hands. Good. I nod mysteriously and then sprint down the subway two steps at a time. I'm going to stop there.